question is in reaching your conclusion, did you personally review all of the underlying evidence? Uh, no, we took an accept did, 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 we accepted. Did Mr. The statement, Rosenstein? No, we accepted the statements in the report as the factual record. We did not go underneath it to see whether or not they were accurate. We accepted it as accurate. 2020 Democratic candidate Senator Kamala Harris pressing Attorney General Barr about his four-page summary of the Mueller report. Barr conceded that neither he nor his staff looked at Mueller's underlying evidence before drawing their conclusions. Senator Kamala Harris joins us now to talk about that and more. Senator, it's great to have you here on New Day. Good to be with you. Thanks, Allison. Good okay. to be with you. I want to ask you about that exchange because to my yeah. layperson's ear, it mm -hmm. sounded as if he was saying that he ex accepted Robert Mueller's facts and didn't feel any need to re-examine the two years worth of fact finding that Robert Mueller had done. So why didn't that sit well with you? Well, listen, as a former prosecutor and as the former attorney general of California, which, um, by the way, I ran the Department of Justice, in, it, which is the second largest Department of Justice in the country, second only to the United States Department of Justice. When we are talking about the Attorney General of the United States making a decision about whether the President of the United States obstructed justice, it, we, we should assume and we should expect that he will take his duties seriously and examine and, and be familiar with the evidence before he makes a decision and announces to the world his decision about whether or not, in this case, the President of the United States obstructed justice. He failed to perform his duties. Mm. And I, I find it highly irresponsible and, frankly, unprofessional. You had another interesting exchange with Attorney General Barr, basically asking him if the White House had ever pressed him to investigate the investigators. So let me right. play that for everyone. Listen yeah. to this. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. Um, the president or anybody else. Seems you'd remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grapple with the word suggest. I mean, there have been discussions of, of matters out there that uh, they have not asked me to open an investigation. But Perhaps they've suggested. I don't know. I wouldn't say suggest. Hinted. I, I don't know. Senator, what did you think of that response? He didn't answer. He did not answer the question. First of all, he, he, it, he wanted it to be repeated, which I, impressed me as he wanted time to really think about how he was going to answer the question. He obviously heard the question the first time. And then parsing words about suggested. Um, he did not answer the question, and I'm sure he didn't because he knew he was under oath and he knew that he could potentially expose himself to perjury if he did not answer honestly. Do you wish you had pressed him further to answer the question? He was clearly, Allison, not going to answer the question as he, as he was throughout the hearing. You know, I'm the most junior on the committee. I was the last to ask questions during the first round and repeatedly my colleagues asked questions um, that he did not answer. He parses his words. And, and again, let's just be really clear about this. We are talking about the Attorney General of the United States who runs the United States Department of Justice. And th this is a person who should conduct himself with the highest level of integrity. This is someone who represents the people of our country and should conduct himself in a way that is about representing the interest of the people of our country and not the President of the United States. But this is not how Attorney General Barr has conducted himself. He is clearly biased. He is clearly reluctant to share the truth with the United States Congress and clearly unable to perform his duties as the Attorney General of the United States. And so, I believe you have called on him to resign. He doesn't seem inclined to do that. Do you think that Congress should move towards impeaching him? I think he should resign. And I think that he has made it very clear that, one, he, has an, he is not able to perform his duties, not only in terms of doing it with, with the interest of the people in mind and, and being unbiased and fair and honest. Not only is that an issue, but when you're talking about an investigation that took place over the course of two years by the special counsel and on a subject that has been a subject of intense concern 
for all of the American public. And for him to, after two years of an investigation, render his opinion after two days, and then we find out he didn't even review the evidence. I'd say that he also has performed um, basically in a way that suggests that he is not a professional in the way that he does his work and does not take his duty seriously. So I think he should resign. Well, I mean, betting people don't think that he's going to resign. Do you think that Congress should move towards holding him in contempt or impeachment? Let's see. I think that there's a lot more work to be done, and I think he should resign. Will Robert Mueller or Don McGahn come to answer questions before Congress this month? I really hope so. I mean, I have called and, and believe that Robert Mueller and, um, and or members of his team absolutely should come before Congress. There's a lot uh, of, of um, information that I think he possesses that needs to be shared with the American public. I have long said and believed that the underlying evidence that supports the report should be shared with the United States Congress at the very least, but with the, with the, with the public. And um, I think Bob Mueller would be probably the most credible um, witness to come before the United States Congress to share what actually happened and to share the significance of the evidence that he discovered um, during the course of his investigation. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about your campaign for okay. the president. Um, mm -hmm. In our latest poll, I'll pull it up for everybody, the candidate that voters say they want to learn more about, you are at the top. 23% of respondents um, chose you, that they're, they want to hear more from. Furthermore, you have another distinction of getting the highest ratings of any CNN candidate town hall. What is it about you that you think voters find so intriguing? Well, I think that, you know, I have been traveling the country. I've been spending a lot of time in Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina and Nevada, a lot of the early states in particular. And I think what, what I'm finding is that people want a, a, a leader who has the ability to speak the truth about what's not working in our country. I think that people want someone who has a proven track record of leadership. I have held elected in office and leadership roles in local government and state government and, and now in, in the federal government. I think that people want um, a leader who has a proven track record of knowing how to fight and be successful. Um, I took on the five big banks of the United States during the foreclosure crisis that robbed so many American families of their homes. And I'm finding that there is a lot of interest in, um, in, 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 in excitement, frankly, in the possibility of having the next president of the United States be someone who actually has a vision for the future of our country as opposed to just looking in the rearview mirror. And so that's the kind of feedback I get when we're on the road. So I'm assuming that's what it is. Hmm. Well, President Trump also has zeroed in on you a couple of times, particularly after yesterday. Um, and he used another uh, insulting word. Let me play this for you and everyone. Okay. He performed incredibly well today. Mm -hmm. And for, for the well, country, the, he performed yeah. well. Kamal Harris. Mm -hmm. Well, she was probably very nasty. You have three of them running against me, and they're up there ranting and raving you know, like lunatics, frankly. And they're running. And how is that fair? So you have Bill Barr, highly respected, great attorney general, and he's got to take the abuse from people that are running for office. They don't care about this. They're just looking for political points. Okay, that was on Fox Business. That was the second time he's used the word nasty about you. What's that about? God only knows. <laughs> Listen, let me be very clear about how I think about what is important and what is before us. We have a president of the United States whose primary interest, I think, that has been clear as a result of what we know from the Mueller report, his primary interest has been to obstruct justice. My primary interest is to pursue justice. And you can call that whatever name you want, but I think that's what the American people want in a leader. Um, okay, we have a little fun kicker that we like to do with all of the presidential candidates that come on the day. <laughs> it's called Candidate Mixtape. That was the musical sting for it. Okay. And we like to talk a lot about music here on this program. So what okay. is your favorite musical genre? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm hip hop <laughs> and okay. reggae and jazz. Um, those are, those are some of my favorites. Okay, do you have a favorite band or a favorite musician? I'd say one of my favorites is Bob Marley. 
Good choice. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. That's a no. crowd pleaser. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. On your mixtape, what would be like your favorite three songs? Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, I, Aretha Franklin, um, uh, anything Aretha Franklin. Um, I would say Bob Marley and then, um, I don't know, I love Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As she says. <laughs> Um, those are great. Thank you for playing along, Senator Harris. It's great to have you and get your perspective on all of this. We'll see you Thank again you. soon. Thank you. I appreciate it, Allison. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thanks so much.